This is God's Not Dead. If you're unfamiliar, it's a Christian, like an extremist Christian propaganda film starring Kevin Sorbo. Absolutely unhinged from reality. And they created like this bizarre atheist trope, an evil atheist trope where atheists hate Christians and they're out to get them and they're persecuted constantly. It's absolutely unhinged from reality, dude. This is part three. If you haven't seen the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. And while we listen to them absolutely propagandize about how evil atheists are, we're going to play some Pokemon Fire Red. It's actually a ROM hack that allows me to catch every single Pokemon, including the legendaries, the starters, everything. So it's called Ultraviolet. Anyway, let's give this a listen. <laughs> Who is she listening to? It's either a country singer or it's like one of those religious nutter butters, right? Like the newsboys or something. It sounds like, um, I don't know, Travis Tritt or like Keith Urban or I don't know, one of those people. Oh my God, she's listening to Franklin Graham. Oh, Franklin Graham's terrible, dude. Uh, Franklin Graham is the son of Billy Graham. Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Falwell. Yeah, Jerry Falwell Sr. Those people put a concerted effort into turning the United States into a Christian nation, basically taking over the Republican Party, doing a hostile takeover. And they largely succeeded, unfortunately. Interestingly enough, though, Franklin Graham is actually cited by the KKK pretty frequently, even back in the 1980s. There's an, a video interview of a KKK Grand Wizard all the way back from 1982. Yeah, November 4th, 1982, where he actually talks about Franklin Graham as like a bastion of the values that he wants to hold up or whatever. It's crazy. I covered it on my main channel not too long ago if you want to see it. Man, and I'm not apologizing for what... I, I don't even know where it is now, but he basically... It, this is like a 10-minute interview. He basically says Franklin Graham segregated his... Uh, what do you call it? Like his uh, church services or whatever up until not too long ago, so we should be segregating church services. We should be segregating everything. It was the argument they used. So anyway, crazy. Oh, I see. So she's Muslim. She's wearing a hijab, and now she's listening to Franklin Graham. How do you, how does one get so indoctrinated? Like she jumped from like one extreme to another. Absolutely crazy, dude. If you believe this in your heart, if you accept this by faith, you see God will forgive you. He'll cleanse you, and He'll set you free. So is the kid going to, like, bust in on her or something and see her listening to Franklin Graham? So now he finds out she's listening to uh, like a right wing nutcase evangelical extremist. OK. Give me that. You must never tell Baba. Swear to me you will never say anything. Swear it. He's going to tell Baba, isn't he?
Bottle of Crystal, my table. Yes, Mr. Shelley? Wait, this is Dean Kane again, right? I think. I have some news. Me too. Okay, but me first. Right, so this is the evil atheist vegan Christian, or uh, anti-Christian, I guess. Evil atheist vegan evolutionist. What were the other things that she was? Humanist, yeah. Evil atheist uh, humanist vegan evolutionist, according to her bumper stickers. And she has cancer. And we've got some high rolling scumbag who presumably is also all of those things. I've just been named partner. <laughs> oh, he's a lawyer. <laughs> I think I have cancer. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I just said? I have cancer. This couldn't wait until tomorrow. What? Yeah, they really want to make them out to be complete scumbags desperately. They'll do anything to portray people to the left of hunting the homeless for sport as total scumbags. <gasps> How can you say that to me? I thought you loved me. I do. But you're changing our agreement. You're, you're breaking our deal. You make it sound... What? Deal? What's he talking about? Like a contract negotiation. Well, what did you think this was? I thought it was love. Grow up, Amy. Love is the most overused word in the English language. Because if you're not Christian, you can't believe in or accept that love is real, right? Okay. It's what we say when we want something, when we need something. And you're as guilty of it as anybody. I don't know what he's talking about. I, I love my wife. I love my kid. What's he talking about? See, it's truly disturbing. The, the degree to which the evangelical voting bloc, the people who produce this film, are willing to dehumanize people that they view as their enemies. Like, what is wrong with them? Seriously. We had fun. <laughs> you were my hot young girlfriend with the chic job. I was your upwardly mobile, charming, successful boyfriend. And we were together because we each got something out of the relationship that we wanted. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, in this scenario, this woman is... Uh, like, uh, I guess a social media influencer or something, and this dude is a lawyer, and he has, like, upward mobility or whatever. But in my case, I'm the social media influencer, and my wife is not the lawyer, but training to be a lawyer anyways. Uh, I don't know. Kind of funny. I, this is kind of like my wife and mine and my wife's relationship, except neither of us are scumbags. And it was good. It was actually, it was great. And now it's over. How did I not see this in you? Because you saw what you wanted. Just, this is just absurd, dude. I get this is what you get when you marry in the world. Like Jehovah's Witnesses have the same view of society. If Jehovah's Witnesses made a film about marrying in the world, and you know what they do, actually, they do this kind of thing all the time. This is exactly how they're portrayed in Jehovah's Witness, like, uh, media and literature and stuff. It's absurd. You understand that I might die. I'm sorry about that. And now she's going to find Jesus. Somebody earlier in the chat said, spoiler alert, she's, oh yeah, it was Emily Neptune, right? That said, yeah, Emily Neptune said, spoiler alert, in the next film, God fixes her cancer and everybody clapped. So don't feel too bad for her. They're just going to use this as an opportunity to like 
spread Jesus even further. This is honestly disgusting, dude, that they're just whatever. It's just bad. Beautiful library. I love it. That's really what law school libraries look like. I just went to my wife's law school library recently, and apparently before the internet, um, law stu law uh, all right, lawyers have access to this thing called Westlaw. Westlaw is like this big database of cases, apparently, like past cases and how they were ruled and precedents that were set and corresponding cases and things like that. But back in the day, apparently, you had to have these big books of case law that, that look just like this. Like right now, he's looking through these case law books, these blue ones on the side. Usually they're red. Those right there, those red ones. Those are case law books. Uh, the others probably are too. I don't know. But anyways, they're case law books. And it basically describes every case that happened and the precedents that were set by them and stuff like that. It's super interesting. And you had to, back in the day before Westlaw or the internet existed, you had to cross reference these cases line by line and it took forever. Hey, uh, you're my philosophy class. Martin, right? Correct. Um, and you're M Mr. Josh. Yeah. Yeah, that's me, Mr. Josh. Hey, is that on our reading list? Oh, uh, no. Uh, can I ask you a question? So he's from the PRC, quote unquote. That's what they said. The People's Republic of China. That's, you know, that that's what they quoted it as. So he's from the PRC and as such an atheist because they're nationally atheist, I believe, in China. Now, that doesn't mean there's no religion in China. There most definitely is. But uh, that, I think that's the impression they want to give. So I, I, like I said, I haven't seen this in years, but I believe... This dude is going to turn giga religious by the end of this, right? That's my guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, why are you doing what you are doing? Why not? It's a philosophy class. Debate is a good thing, right? Generally. Everyone else thinks I'm crazy. Girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, left me over it. My parents don't want me to risk it. At the end of it all, I'm going to have to work like a dog for the rest of the semester just to catch up on my other classes. You have described your difficulties, but you haven't answered my question of why. I don't know, I just, uh, I think of Jesus as my friend. Oh, it's painful. I just can't stand it. His bizarre bastardization of Jesus, the one that, you know, believes that if you are rich, then it means that God loves you more. He's not your friend. You, you don't know anything about Jesus in the Bible, as the Bible describes. And it's absurd to pretend that you do. So you think Jesus is God? Yeah, I'm the son of God. Okay, that makes no sense. The Trinity is fake, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew this, but it was added you know, centuries later by monks doesn't actually belong in there. Um, the book of John is fake. It was based off of the book of Matthew and Luke, which were based off of the book of Mark. And there are a ton of fake stories added in. Like John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning, the, there was God, the word was God, the word is God, something, or I don't even remember now. That's the verse that Christians use as the basis to claim that the Trinity is real. The writer of John came around, you know, a hundred years later and posited that Jesus was God when Jesus himself did not believe that. The Trinity is not real. It was never real. Neither is the idea of hellfire. It's all fake. These are two examples of things that Jehovah's Witnesses get correct. Uh, they get 
a ton of other stuff wrong, of course, but they used those two things as a basis to claim that they were correct about everything else, to kind of lend themselves credibility. I don't want to disappoint him, even if everyone else thinks I should. See, to me, he's not dead. He's alive. I don't want anyone to get talked out of believing in him just because some professor thinks they should. Apparently they think this is what happens in college. Like, you go to college and people just, like, all hate God or whatever. And you get talked out of it. This is actually something that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, since I brought them up, I'll bring them up again. This is something that Jehovah's Witnesses believe. Jehovah's Witnesses have been talking about education and how dangerous it is for decades and decades. This is Toni Morris. At the time this was made, he was a governing body member of Jehovah's Witnesses. He's since been kicked out. Don't really know why. No information on that yet, but oh man, am I excited to find out. Anyways, listen to what he had to say about higher education and honestly about philosophy. He's perfectly like... He's kind of addressing this movie when you think about it. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are against education. Well, that's ridiculous. We're not against education. Uh, we are pro-education. It's just that we are selective with who does the educating. I.e., we are against higher education. We are against people going to college you should be coming to meetings of Jehovah's Witnesses instead of going to college. That's basically what he's saying here. We promote divine education. We believe it to be superior because it leads to everlasting life. Okay, you can believe it to be superior and still accept that people need to go to college to be able to support themselves. So with schools of higher education... In many of their curriculums, and if you know anything about it, maybe some of you have been, uh, do they not have philosophy one and philosophy two? It doesn't matter what you're going to major in. And they start you off there. You, you'd be going for another thing, but you, you have philosophy one, you have philosophy two. No, I mean, I, had, I, I went to college for substance abuse counseling, and I never had any philosophy classes, so that's not necessarily true. And then all of a sudden it gets in there and the intellectual gripping of the mind, uh, very hard to recover from. That is fascinating. The intellectual gripping of the mind is hard to recover from. Just saying such a thing is fascinating to me. I've seen this so many times and we could tell you so many horror stories and the parents are all uh, distraught. Why did you do more for my son? Why did you do more for my daughter? I would say, who dropped them off? The elders are heartbroken. They try. No lot of them personally. So you have to decide that. You want to take the risk? Your call. We're warning you. So anyways, that's the Jehovah's Witness position on higher education. You won't be disfellowshipped for it, but we're warning you, basically. They're kind of the same idea being portrayed here, right? A little bit. See you around, Martin. Bye. Hiya. Tom Blanchard, Metro City Auto. Here's your keys. Thank you. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Do I uh, need to sign something? Uh, Boy, that was a creepy smile. Absolutely, I'm giving you a car. Sign here, uh, and then one more right there, and one more there. And if you can just initial there, there, and there. Thank you. Call us when you're back. You have it for the weekend. We'll come pick you up. Thanks. You're kidding. What did you do? Did you break it? What? Check and see if it's still in gear. No, it's in park. 
I don't understand it. It worked fine. Okay, I guess they're trying to make it out like God doesn't want him to do something, right? <laughs> Minutes ago. All right, well, no, it's not. How soon can you get us another car? Well, not tonight. It's already after 5.30. Everyone's gone home, and I'm already kind of late for an audition. An audition? Yeah. The gang and I are doing Death of a Salesman, and uh, it's kind of a dinner theater thing. What happened to Satisfaction Guaranteed? It's all right, David. We're going to leave tomorrow. You want to you want this guy to just upend his in or, I'm sorry. You want this guy to just upend his entire life and take personal time away to just satisfy you? Like how self-absorbed do you have to be? Satisfaction guaranteed. It's all right, David. We're going to leave tomorrow. You want to make this drive and miss half the day? Pops is going to rain anyway. The forecast for tomorrow is 82 and sunny at 9 a.m. Sometimes you don't make any sense. Sometimes you make too much. Just remember, God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. This is painful. Will you sign this saying you reject the car? Beautiful building. I love it. You're on with Mark. <laughs> it's me, Dork. Your sister. Oh, and this is about? You really should go see Mom. She's not doing well. She hasn't been doing well for years. That's why of course, she, he's a scumbag lawyer who's worthless and an atheist, so he doesn't care if she has dementia or whatever, right? You really should go see Mom. She's not doing well. She hasn't been doing well for years. That's why they call it dementia. Still, you should go see her. Claire said you haven't been there in a while. Like it matters? Besides, I just bought her a new TV. Look, I'll make you a deal. You go and you ask her what 3 plus 3 equals. If she gives you the right answer, I'll visit. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, they haven't come out and said he's an atheist, but he was dating a humanist, evolutionist, vegan atheist influencer so i i have to assume right that's not fair life's not fair i gotta go say hi to amy oh that's over what'd you do unresolved personal issues she's got some stuff she's got to work through i'm sorry to hear that yeah that's the way it goes okay we ready to get this started Seriously, you've got to get a life. Yeah, tell me about it. Hey, honey. Oh. oh, sorry, the door is open. Oh, it's okay. See, I didn't understand how these were all connected, but I guess that this girl is... Wow, okay, everybody in this movie is connected, apparently. This girl is uh, Kevin Sorbo, the atheist professor's daughter. All right. I just let myself in. Hi. Hi. Dude, what? Oh, okay. I thought they were father and daughter because he called her honey and they look really mismatched in age and then they kissed and now I feel traumatized. Hmm. Oh, hey, did you um pick up the bottle of wine I wanted? Um, I did. I left it in the car. It's in the car. Uh, you, look, look, don't worry about it. Um, you have a lot on your plate. So, you know, just thank you for helping set up our dinner party. <laughs> he's he, OK. The point is, he's a D-bag for no reason, because all atheists are D-bags for no reason. Right. They they are desperate to make him out to be like the ultimate athe evil atheist trope. Well, hmm. unless I'm wrong. Yeah. Weird family dynamic. <laughs> right. That's. That's my mistake. Apparently, they're they're married to each other or together or whatever. They're not father and daughter. All the guests are from the philosophy department. It's not true. I mean, Vivian's a sociologist. <laughs> <laughs> You're proving my point. Look, I, I can't help it. See that 
my intellectual rigor falls to pieces the instant I get around you. Really? Uh, you could have fooled me. Hmm. The first time I walked into your classroom, mm -hmm. you were all blood and thunder. That was a uh, performance staged largely for your benefit. <laughs> in the meantime, I kept trying to keep my eyes off you. I'm hoping that there was a brain inside that pretty head. <laughs> Why? Well, because if there wasn't, then, you know, there's no way I could have made myself go out with you. Yeah, you have to have a brain. Absolutely. I feel the same way. You've got to be at least a little intelligent, right? You can't be a complete airhead. Uh, some people just are not that intelligent, and that's just what it is, you know? And I'm not meant for those people, and that's okay, you know? I have a specific type, and my type is somebody who can have rigorous intellectual debates with me, you know, moral, have moral clashes. In fact, I don't even want somebody that agrees with me on every moral issue. In fact, I'd prefer that they don't agree with me on every moral issue. For example, I was talking to my wife recently about something. So I went to American Atheist Convention. There were Jehovah's Witnesses standing on each street corner, you know, passing out their stuff. Now, there are these little um, uh, flyers that you can get that say things like Jehovah's Witnesses protect predators. I'm trying to use the polite version of the word. Or are you a Jehovah's Witness and things just don't make sense or they don't add up? Uh, you know, go to this website, go to the subreddit and talk to others who feel the same as you, that kind of thing. And if you, you can grab these flyers, they're stickers actually. So you grab these stickers and you stick them on like the subway wall behind where they usually stand, for example, or stick them on a lamppost nearby. And the, the Jehovah's Witnesses will no longer stand in that area for obvious reasons. And I think that's a fantastic way of battling their evangelism campaign. But here's my problem with that. And this is where the, the whole debate thing comes in. I bitched about it when... Donald Trump supporters were going around to gas pumps and putting Biden, I did that, stickers on them, right? How can I possibly, in good conscience, put up stickers that kind of turn Jehovah's Witnesses away when I complained about Trump supporters doing the exact same thing with gas pumps? My wife and I debated this issue for, like, hours not too long ago. She thinks that it's perfectly morally justified to put the stickers up. And she doesn't like what the Trump supporters are doing because they're wrong. But I felt like I, you know, my complaint was with the tactics, not with the ideas behind the tactics necessarily. Obviously, Trumpists are wrong when they put up, you know, the Biden stickers. But my problem is with the tactics more than anything. So anyways, that's the moral debate that I had. Uh, and I'm still kind of torn on it. Um, I'm going to stick these Jehovah's Witness stickers up. I just feel like a little bit of a hypocrite for doing it is all, you know? She says she doesn't have a problem with people basically vandalizing like that. That's what that is, vandalism. I just don't, I, I think that I have to follow the rules of society and they should have to fool, uh, they should have to follow them too. It's the way I view it. So anyways, um, if I was with an airhead, I wouldn't be able to have these types of conversations and debates. Or, or if I did, they wouldn't mean anything. It'd be empty, you know? I can't date dumb people, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I guess they're trying to portray this as like an evil trait. Oh my God, you have a problem with dating dumb people? Well, I have a problem with you. I'm hoping that there was a brain inside that pretty head. <laughs> Why? That was an offensive way of phrasing it. I don't know why he said something like that, but I don't see anything wrong with this. Well, because if there wasn't, then, you know, there's no way I could have made myself go out with you. I mean, <laughs> as it was, I waited until you aced the midterm. It was an Okay, now I'm seeing the problem. This is wrong. He dated his, uh, his student. Never date students or people you have this power dynamic with never ever ever this is wrong this is straight up wrong <laughs> it's like a therapist dating their client do not do that there's a power imbalance here that should be respected as it was i waited until you aced the midterm 
It was an A minus. Close enough. She doesn't seem very happy with him right now. Where is she? Huh? Who? Well, that carefree, free-spirited girl who forced me to almost you know, risk my career by dating her. This is just wrong, dude. This is wrong. You should never do this. And again, they're trying to make him the epitome of evil. Everything he does, everything he says, everything. It's all evil in some way or another. You know, the one who quoted Emily Dickinson and Shelley and SpongeBob SquarePants with equal self-confidence. I mean, whatever happened to the old Mina? Because I miss her. She has got a mom who's failing. Hmm. She's sensing time is passing by. And she's starting to wonder if, uh, if she's unequally yoked. All right. Unequally yoked. That's a Bible verse, of course. It basically says you shouldn't marry somebody if you're not a Christian. So he just expressed his expectations with a partner. I can only date somebody who is intelligent. And they kind of shamed him for that, right? They That made this out to be a bad quality. And now she's expressing her expectations for a partner. I can only date a Christian but they're making this out to be virtuous. You see how this works? There, It's a deep hypocrisy portrayed simultaneously. It's just like the thing earlier where they had the Muslim woman being more devout and they portrayed that as evil. But the Christians being more devout is a good thing. There's a blind hypocrisy in everything about this. You've been uh, reading again, haven't you? Been reading again, so I guess he wants her stupid. I, that's what it seems like to me, right? Reading, listening, thinking. No, <laughs> you can hardly call this thinking. You know, it's his Agreed. I mean, I assume it's the Bible that she's reading, right? Thinking. No, <laughs> you can hardly call this thinking. You know, as a matter of fact, it's the opposite of thinking. Right. It's reading something and then taking it as like law blindly without putting any extra thought into it whatsoever. You know I'm a Christian. You knew that when you first started seeing me. Yes, and you know that I'm not. Yeah, I know, and I know there's a lot of things you don't want to talk about, so we don't talk about them. Yeah, except the not talking is starting to get louder and louder, and soon it will be deafening, and I don't know if I can put up with that. You know, he's trying to they're trying to portray him as an absolutely evil person because he won't even like date a Christian. And they're trying to show that you shouldn't be dating atheists. It's fascinating how they're as uh, Dragon's Wing Zero said, they're stereotyping everyone but themselves. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what they're doing right now. They're stereotyping everyone but themselves and they're portraying themselves doing the exact thing the bad guy is doing except it's virtuous when they do it this is really interesting to get like a glimpse into the producers of this film's headspace it's good when i do it bad when they do it and yeah he's such a creep absolutely they they want him to be viewed as a creep desperately and they they're succeeding atheists are not okay with this this is just weird and for what it's worth there's nothing wrong with having expectations in a relationship I I will never date a Christian. I mean, I don't think I'd have a problem with dating somebody who was kind of on the fence or or maybe moderate Christian. I'd be okay with that. But I feel like you need a connection with moral values and interests. And that's why FarmersOnly.com exists. You know, that's why... Uh, what's that right-wing MAGA one? I forget what that is. Um, MAGA match... MagaMatchUSA.com. Meet other deplorables and Trump supporters. Wait, are there multiple? Is there an app called... Oh my God, dude. There's an app called Writer, apparently. A dating app called Writer. And it's a MAGA-only dating app, apparently. It, is it, it looks like it's a few years old. Lawton explained that she created the app after Sarah Huckabee Sanders was kicked out of, Virgi of a Virginia restaurant at an event 
the infuriated Lawton. Yeah, writer, the dating app. Damn, I was really hoping I'd be able to find, like, an online version of this. I may be able to add my phone as, like, a source to my video stuff and capture it. So, I don't know. We'll play around with it. But, yeah, let's keep watching this. And louder. And soon it will be deafening. And I don't know if I can put up with that. I know. Do you? Yeah. Because we need to be clear on this. And there's only room in this relationship for two, which means I don't get a mistress and you don't get to drag a 2,000-year-old dead carpenter turned itinerant rabbi into our lives. Look, I'm going to go fresh now. You don't get to drag Jesus into our lives, I guess. Okay. Like I said, like she should be able to talk about the things that interest her and vice versa. They should be able to express themselves the way that they want and not worry about the other person like getting sick of it or losing their minds or whatever they're just trying to make him out to be a complete scumbag and they're succeeding this they shouldn't be together they just they shouldn't be together if for no other reason than because she's a student that's just wrong Is this the same car? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Same model, different color. The other one was a Cabernet. This is more of a, a Merlot. You know, lying's not good. Lying to an ordained minister is flat out bad. You know that, right? Sir, I assure you, this is a different automobile here. Why do, why does being a priest, like, have anything to do with it? Try it out. How'd your audition go? Oh, pretty good. I'm up for the role of Biff, so thanks for asking. So the point is that God is sending him a very clear message. You're not supposed to go to this thing or whatever. You guys going somewhere? How's it look for you with the department chair position? Uh, yeah, I'm up for review mid-semester. Indian polishers me, it's a slam dunk. Well, congratulations, Jeffrey. Anything else on your plate? Not really. <laughs> Feel like sharing? I've, uh, I've got this student in my introductory class this semester who's well, he's taken the challenge to prove the existence of God. In your classroom? Yes. This doesn't really feel like that out of the ordinary to me, but I don't know. Silly boy. <laughs> Freshman? Oh, yeah. It doesn't seem quite fair to me. Well, how's that? He's inexperienced in front of a room. And you're expecting him to compete with you in your own field of expertise. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. But that's what philosophy is all about, right? I mean, that's what college is all about. Uh, learning to debate and battle and fight and argue and win. That's what the teacher is there to do, is to teach the kid how to do this properly, seems to me. Come on, Mina. I mean, this is fun for me. I can't help what the boy wants to make a fool of himself and commit <laughs> academic suicide. <laughs> Look, I try to stop him. I gave him out, but no, no, no. He wants to prove that God isn't dead. <laughs> like, I don't even know what that means, God is dead. It, it's kind of a nonsensical statement, right? I know I am in the minority here. But I actually believe in God. In reality, in a room full of atheists, this isn't how it would go. They would just start asking questions, probably. I mean, I've been to American Atheists. I've even spoken at American Atheists. There are Christians that go there because American Atheist works with a, uh, Christian groups all the time, like Christians Against Christian Nationalism, CACN. It's a coalition that they formed to try to battle extremism. Christians work with non-Christians all the time, but they're desperate to make it out in this show, in this movie, 
that Christians and atheists can never work together, can never be together. They are too different from each other. And for that reason, it's wrong for them to like be in the same room and they're going to try to scare Christians away from atheists to the best of their ability. It's just sad. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, she is um, she's a work in progress. <laughs> so, so uh, darling, I think it's best we just change the subject. But I'm just saying that... I mean, I, 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 I've asked politely. Okay. This is just cringy and terrible. This would never happen in real life. Atheists are not like this. You know, atheists are normal people. I'm a normal person. I don't have a problem with Christians or any of that. It's just completely made up. It's fear-mongering garbage designed to make Christians afraid of atheists, and it's honestly sad. Like, they're portraying themselves as being persecuted all through this entire movie when, in reality, they are actually persecuting atheists. This movie is an entire exercise in persecution. The Coke of Inn is almost done. Excellent. To the dining. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's that dude from the PRC, as they called it. I've tested out of several classes, including math and chemistry. But in one of my required classes, Introduction to Philosophy, there seems to be a lot of talk about God. I'm reading the subtitles in case you're not watching, you're just listening. So he's talking to his God. I, I, God, I, I almost said he's talking to his God. He's talking to his dad, apparently, in what appears to be China. And, he, and his dad says, God? Why God? There's a lot of argument over, as to whether he exists. What does your professor say? He's very certain that God does not exist. Then it's simple. God does not exist. I'm busy now. I have to go. Okay, he says. Like, they're making it this big battle. Like, anybody cares. Like, go nuts. Believe in God if you want. Who who really gives a shit? It's like earlier, uh, in, I think it was in the last episode, they were, or maybe part, it was part one that I was watching this. They portrayed the, the I don't know, the head of the Duck Dynasty TV show, whatever his name is, Willie Robert, Robertson, something or other. They portrayed him as believing that, like, People were offended that he prays on the show. Like, I don't give a shit if you pray on the show. Why would I care? I didn't even know you do that. And now that I know, I don't care. It's absurd. It's nonsense. All of it. Although, for what it's worth, what's his name? It's, um, is it Phil Robertson? Yeah, it's Phil Robertson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought I had clips of Phil Robertson on here. Apparently, I don't. But Phil Robertson hates, as he calls them, heathens hates atheists can't stand them believes that they're worthless trash that's real full-blown persecution is what that is that is hatred of somebody for some intrinsic quality about them and it's simply disgusting so while they are actually actively persecuting others they claim persecution as they're punching someone in the face they say stop hitting my fist with your face Nice Merlot to take the edge off. Cheers, everyone. Nina, this, this wine is awful. It's been cooked. It tastes like it was stunning in a moldy basement. Talk about your grapes of wrath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess she left it sitting in the car. I, I don't know anything about wine, so. <laughs> I bought it before I went shopping the other day. I locked it in the trunk. And when I got home, I forgot about it. Well, I think this dinner serves as a uh, valuable lesson. As Socrates put it over 2,000 years ago, no tea, say it on. <laughs> I don't get it. Looks like it's Greek to her. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I have to look this up. I, I don't know what that means. He's put it over 2,000 years ago. 
define G-N-O-T-H-I-S-E-A-U-T-O-N. This means know thyself in an ancient Greek, uh, I'm sorry, in an ancient Greek aphorism. According to the Greek writer, uh, something or other, it was the first of three something something. Anyway, the point is it means know thyself. I don't get the reference. As a uh, valuable lesson, as Socrates put it over 2,000 years ago, no T say it on. <laughs> Looks like it's Greek to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a know thyself, darling, know thyself, which I suggest means knowing your own limitations. <laughs> oh, she's incapable of purchasing wine. Like, they just want him to be a scumbag. They're doing anything they can to portray him as a scumbag, whatever it takes. Atheists mistreat Christians terribly and hate them and want to make them miserable and embarrassed and treat them like garbage and blah, blah, blah. It's just completely made up. This is not how the world works at all. Now, uh, if you'll all excuse me, it's time for the help to depart. Sweetheart. Okay, now the woman who has cancer is walking into the cancer ward, I suppose. Getting in what appears to be a CAT scan, I think is what that is. Oh, CAT scans suck. I've had one. They inject red, or they inject dye into your veins so that when you go through the thing, radioactive dye, if I remember correctly. And unfortunately, I was an addict for years, and I absolutely destroyed my veins. It destroyed them. The only vein available to doctors if they have to inject that dye or draw blood or anything is my jugular vein. They have to hit my jugular vein in my neck. Uh, I think I've like, the problem is veins don't regrow. Now you have like thousands of little veins all over your body. And when you destroy the main ones that are used to, you know, to access your circulatory system, smaller ones kind of grow out and expand to take the role there are a ton of deep veins, so I, it's not like I'm in danger of like having bad circulation or anything. It, others have stepped in, but when those smaller veins expand to take the role of the bigger ones, you can't poke those with a needle anymore because they're too weak. They'll just collapse immediately. So, yeah, they have to hit my jugular vein anytime. And I remember last time I went in one of these machines, they had to hit my jugular vein and inject this radioactive dye into my jugular it sucked god it sucks i hate it it's terrible pacemaker no other piercings right wait is this an mri this looks like a cat scan machine i thought mris were like closed on the other end maybe not no i know it sounds crazy but i have to ask if there's any ferrous metal anywhere inside your body the magnetic field will pull it out of you forcibly Last class, I was asked a question that I couldn't answer. Um, as Professor Radisson pointed out, Stephen Hawking is an atheist. He also wrote a book called The Grand Design in which he says the following. Because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. And to be honest, I did not refute that. I mean, after all, Hawking is clearly a genius. Yeah, I don't like worship scientists like this. Like, I did, maybe he was a genius. I don't really care. He added dramatically to human knowledge and thinking and understanding. 
That's what I really care about. Everything else is irrelevant, you know. But Professor John Lennox, who teaches mathematics and philosophy, has demonstrated that. Oh, God, Lennox is terrible. Yeah, he, he is a professor and he's like an ultra right wing nutcase, like evangelical professor who debates atheists all the time on whether or not God is real. And it's just cringy. Professor John Lennox, who teaches mathematics and philosophy, has demonstrated that there are not one, even two, but three errors of logic contained in that one simple sentence, and it all boils down to circular reasoning. Okay, I don't care who it was that demonstrated this stuff. I want to see the demonstration. And there is none. It's completely made up. I know Lennox because of the debate stuff, but he's... He hasn't, like, moved the field forward in any way. He's just semi-famous for having debated a whole bunch of people. That's about it. Hawking is basically saying that the universe exists because the universe needed to exist, and because the universe needed to exist, it therefore created itself. It's like this. No, that wasn't the argument with Stephen Hawking. It was that it was it's possible for the universe to have come into being without the help of somebody kicking it into being. That's basically all he was saying. He wasn't saying that it most definitely did happen that way or any of that. The universe needed to exist, it therefore created itself. It's like this. If I say to you that I can prove that Spam is the best tasting food that's ever existed because in all of history, no food has ever tasted better, you'd probably look at me strange and say, I haven't proven anything, and you'd be right. All I've done is restate my original claim. Oh, like he did earlier when he said that the God, the, or the universe exists, and he knows that because God exists, and that's just what he believes or something like that. In his previous argument, he argued this. It's absurd on every level, and it does not lead to any foundational, like, groundbreaking understanding of anything. It's just nonsense. But when Hawking claims that the universe created itself because it needed to create itself, and then offers that as an explanation as to how and why it was created, we That's not what happened. He just said it's possible for the universe to have created itself. We don't immediately recognize that he's doing the same thing, but he is. Prompting Lennox to further comment, nonsense remains nonsense even when spoken by famous scientists even though the general public assumes they're statements of science. This is the height of hubris. Are you telling me that you, a freshman, are saying that Stephen Hawking is wrong? No. What I'm saying is that John Lennox, a professor of mathematics and philosophy, has found Professor Hawking's reasoning to be faulty, and I agree with his logic. But, but if you can't bear to disagree... Okay, Hawking was not positing that the universe definitely created itself. That's the problem. There is no circular logic... Because it's not logic. He's not using a syllogism to determine that God isn't real. If he was, then maybe. He just said it's possible for the universe to have created itself. That's it. That's all he said. This is just ridiculous. Reasoning to be faulty, and I agree with his logic. But, but if you can't bear to disagree with Hawking's thinking, then I suggest that you turn to page five of his book where he insists philosophy is dead. And if you're so sure of Professor Hawking's infallibility and philosophy really is dead, then... Okay, look, again, they're treating him like he's a god. He's not infallible. It's not that we can't bear to disagree with him or any of that garbage. This is just a made-up problem. People are not, like, afraid of disagreeing with people or whatever. The whole scientific method is built upon disagreement and checking each other's work and arguing and debating. There's nothing, like, wrong with debating this stuff. Nah, well, there's really no need for this class. <laughs> right, let, let me step back so we have the context here. Philosophy is dead. And if you're to disagree with Hawking's thinking, then I suggest that you turn to page five of his book where he insists philosophy is dead. I don't know what the context was on this. Is this quote mind like, what is it? Psalms 12, 1. Is that the one? No, I'm sorry. It's uh, Psalms 14, 1. There is no God. I quote, there is no God. That's what the verse says. There is no God. Psalms 14, 1. 
you can ignore the previous few words that say the fool hath said in his heart. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. The Bible says there is no God, and that's what I'm zeroing in on. Is that the type of thing that he's doing right now? It's called quote mining, by the by. And if you're so sure of Professor Hawking's infallibility and philosophy really is dead, then, uh, well, there's really no need for this class. <laughs> It's like I'm a convenience to him. Except for when my faith comes up, then he becomes verbally abusive. I'm getting then leave, GTFO. You don't need to be in this relationship if you're miserable like this, really. I don't understand why she stays in this relationship. Like, I, I get that these people are, like, the people who produce this are absolutely obsessed with maintaining a relationship at any cost even when it's destructive to everybody involved but it is so important to be willing to part ways at any cost get out if he's treating you like garbage or laughing at you or downplaying the interests that you have or pretending you're a moron or whatever leave you don't have to put up with that don't fall for the sunken costs fallacy where you believe you must stay with him or must be involved or, or must whatever simply because you've invested so much already. You, you must take care of your own mental health. That's first and foremost. Guessing he's bright. Brilliant. Handsome. Yes. And his attention makes you feel special. Gives you a sense of completeness. Have you been reading my diary? Psychologists call it the Cinderella complex. It's not my name for it, so don't get upset with me. Guys are capable of the same thing. It's just they don't have a name for it. But in essence, you're looking for his approval to give you a sense of self-worth instead of generating it internally. Don't most people do that? Yeah, a lot of people do, sure. But using romance to shore up self-image is an unstable foundation. I agree 100%. It's important to be on your own for at least a little while and find yourself. Find your own motivations for living and being who you are. Find your own personality. The problem that a lot of people run into is they get in a relationship young when they're forming their own personalities and they come to find that they've they've kind of formed their personality around the person that they're with and can't imagine a world in which they aren't with that person, despite the fact that they treat them like garbage. So as soon as things fall apart and they split up with this person, they ha they feel they have to jump to the next person. They must because their world doesn't make sense if they're alone. If you find yourself in that situation, you must be alone for a period of time. Give it six months. Uh, you don't have to be with somebody else. Learn to enjoy life alone for a little while because it's not so bad. Six months to a year, and then you can find somebody new. And if that person tries to change you, tries to get you to base your personality around them or any of that, leave. There's no reason to be with somebody who's toxic to you, none. Sure. But using romance to shore up self-image is an unstable foundation. Do you believe God's capable of error, bias, or bad judgment? No. So if he's incapable of mistakes, and he made you in his likeness and image, then it follows that he cares about you, right? Wow, this is super interesting. It seems to me this same exact argument could be used in relation to the LGBT community. Couldn't God... I mean, God doesn't make mistakes, and he created people that are gay or trans or whatever. So it stands to reason that he loves them the way they are, and you should just move on with your life and not hate people for some intrinsic quality about them, right? They don't apply the, the logic the other direction. It always only ever applies the way they want it to in these very specific situations. There's no logical consistency to the belief is the point right to the point where god's only son would willingly be crucified again for you just you if that's what was necessary well if he loves you that much who cares what your boyfriend thinks 
to the wrong person, you'll never, you'll never have any worth. Yeah, the guy in this movie, like the professor, is just like a scumbag. And they intentionally portrayed him that way. I'm sure these scumbags probably exist, but this isn't they're pre they're pretending that this is like the direct result of being an atheist. If you are an atheist, then you're going to be like this professor. And it's a religion, so the more devout you get, the more of a scumbag you become. That's kind of like the the idea they're trying to portray. It's just absurd on every level. But to the right person, you mean everything. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, for the last 150 years, Darwinists have been saying that God is unnecessary to explain man's existence and that evolution replaces God. No, they've been saying God is unnecessary to explain man's existence. They haven't been saying that it replaces God. That's ridiculous. You can believe in God and simultaneously accept the fact of evolution if you choose. They're not mutually exclusive like these people are desperate to make you think. But evolution only tells you what happens once you have life. So where did that Exactly, yeah. So now he's referring to abiogenesis. It's a totally separate theory. Abiogenesis addresses the origins of life. That's what it means. Uh, without life origins. That's basically the, the meaning of the term. And uh, it's a totally separate thing. But evolution only tells you what happens once you have life. Something just fell. I don't know what it is or where it came from. It's just it, it just kind of floated down from nowhere. Is this a sign from God? Buy more flexible foam things? That was weird. Okay, let's keep listening. <laughs> ...have been saying that God is unnecessary to explain man's existence and that evolution replaces God. But evolution only tells you what happens once you have life. So where did that something that's alive come from? Well, Darwin never really addressed it. That's right. He didn't talk about abiogenesis. He assumed maybe some lightning hit a stagnant pool full of the right kind of chemicals. Bing. No, he didn't assume anything. He didn't need to assume anything at all. The answer is, I don't know. That's as far as you need to go here. I don't know. And that's the correct answer. He addressed it. He assumed maybe some lightning hit a stagnant pool full of the right kind of chemicals. Bingo. A living something. But uh, it's just not that simple. You see... Darwin claimed that the ancestry of all living things came from that one single simple organism, which reproduced and was slowly modified over time into the complex life forms we view today, which is- That's correct. Why, after contemplating his own theory, Darwin uttered his famous statement, natura non facit sota, meaning nature does not jump. Well, as noted, author Lee Strobel pointed out that if you can picture- Oh, God, Lee Strobel is a complete nutter butter. He's like a Christian evangelist nutcase. Jump. Well, as noted, author Lee Strobel pointed out that if you can picture the entire 3.8 billion years that scientists have say life has been around as one 24-hour day, in the space of just about 90 seconds, most major animal groups suddenly appear in the forms of which they currently hold, not slowly and steadily, as Darwin predicted, but in evolutionary terms, almost instantly. Well, there was a boom. Yeah, I mean, things exploded, and then everything died off suddenly and slowly came back to be over and over and over again. It's like a big cycle, so yeah. So, nature does not jump becomes nature makes a giant leap. Over the course of millions and millions of years, yes. There's, you know, millions of years gap here, but yeah. I mean, he's just twisting the facts of the case to make it seem completely different than it actually is. Thetis explained this sudden outburst of new biological information. And God said, let the water team with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living and moving thing with which the water teems according to its kind. Okay, that's fine. But we're still talking about over the course of millions of years this took place. God saw that it was good. Genesis 1.20. Like, the thing, he's trying to 
kind of sneak things in here. He's a young Earth creationist. He believes that God created everything instantaneously with the snap of a finger. That's ridiculous. But he's trying to argue from the position that God created everything and then let things slowly evolve, but while simultaneously arguing against evolution. The entire argument is nonsense. It doesn't make any sense at all. In my intro to philosophy class, I was a Christian and my professor was vocally atheist. I wrote a paper about God and still got a B. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I generally speaking, atheists are actually the ones that are persecuted in this society. It's not Christians that are persecuted, obviously. I don't think I even need to say that. So they're trying to portray themselves as being persecuted by atheists when that's just not how things work at all. But anyway, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Enzo's Library. I found this song she was listening to. It's Save a Life by Manic Drive. They're a Christian rock band from Canada. Oh, okay. Well, I'm always worried about playing music on my YouTube channel without criticizing it directly because, you know, can get in trouble for that. So Dean Cain is a 90s has been as Clark Kent. That's true. I didn't realize Dean Cain was a Christian. Is he a Christian nutter butter? This is actually news to me. For homophobes, evangelists sure do like circle jerking, right? <laughs> exactly. That's that's fair enough. In other words, creation happened because God said it should happen. And even what looks to our eyes to be a blind, unguided process could really be divinely controlled from start to finish. Could. Sure. Yeah, that's possible, I suppose. But it wasn't instantaneous in the blink of an eye, like you are arguing right now. He's going to have to pick a lane. In real life, they would make him pick a lane. Either he would be arguing for old earth creationism or young earth creationism. You can't have it both ways like he's trying to get here. Oh, I get that's the end of the scene. I guess they think that he like won the debate or something. <laughs> 